All right, in the last video, we talked about just a simple flex property in which that uh, when you have extra space or when things get cut down, you don't have enough space, how will things distribute the extra space or chop themselves down when you have not enough space? And uh, we were actually going ahead and just using the flex property and setting it to things like one and two. And what that essentially means, and we should be using this, but by one, we actually have three properties that are packed into this one property there. It's something called flex grow. And there's another one called flex shrink. And we have a third one called flex basis. Now what flex grow is, is essentially when we have extra space, how should we divide it amongst everybody on the same line? So uh, what I'm going to do here is if I take that flex off, I go to my box and I just say flex grow one and refresh. That's exactly what we were doing before. Um, and we are also doing something called flex shrink one. So again, if you set flex to be one, what it does is it, it's a shorthand for setting flex grow to one and flex shrink to one. So flex grow is pretty, um, <clears throat> pretty easy to understand. I think that when you have extra space, how much extra should it take? Um, but before we get into these too much, we actually need to look at the third one, which is called flex basis. And essentially what flex basis is in an ideal world, before we start growing and shrinking, before we start taking the extra space and allotting it between all of our flex items, how big should it be? How wide should the actual element be or how high? should the element be if we are uh, switching our axis. Again, our main axis is left to right, cross axis is top to bottom. So let's actually, I've uh, just made this a super simple example because um, this is a little bit hard to, to follow along with. If you open up the uh, flex grow and shrink one, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select box one, and I wanna say flex basis, uh, let's do 400 px and same for box two. Let's do that. So let's just go ahead and say here in an ideal world, the, each of these boxes would be 400 pixels wide, assuming that the wrapper of the container is going to be 800. So when I refresh there uh, and I inspect these elements here, you'll see that this one is 400 pixels wide and that one is 400 pixels wide. So take note that that says 380, how come? Because we got 10 padding and 10 on the other side. So in an ideal world, that is 400 by 400. And that's great, except w the question is, what happens when we have extra room, which is where our flex grow comes in? In this case, we do have extra room. Where should that extra room go? Should one or two, how should they divvy it up between the two of them? So um, <clears throat> on box one, we can go ahead and say flex grow. Um, and let's just say one and see what that does. So what, what, what do you think should happen if you set flex grow on this guy to one and then nothing on this one? Refresh, oh, that's interesting. So what happened there is that we didn't apply anything on box two for flex grow. And if we inspect it, see, look, it's still 400 pixels wide. And then box one just ate up the rest of it. So what that tells us is the default flex grow for anything is zero. Essentially, it means when there is extra room, don't do anything, which is essentially the default. When if we don't put flex grow on anything, when there is extra room, don't do anything. Just stay at your ideal space. However, we're not really that interested in that because we want to go ahead and put a grow on it of well, I'll put just I'll just put a one on each of them and that's not going to do much cuz it's going to evenly distribute it. However, now if I take this box one and make it uh, let's just do two. I'm going to put my cursor where the middle is and I refresh You'll see that it moved to the right just a little bit more because now box one is getting twice as much of the extra room as box two. 
Um, now, where this is really uh, noticeable is if you make flex grow like something like 10. Now, one is getting 10 times the amount of extra space that two is. So that's great. Um, and if I open up my dev tools here and I go ahead and resize my browser, you'll see in the top right hand corner, it's telling us exactly how wide my browser is. So right now it's 1,400 ish pixels wide. So um, that's great because we've got extra room, extra room, 400 plus 400 is 800. And we've got all kinds of extra space there. But what happens if I then bring my browser down to, let's go to 800 pixels. Okay, look, let's inspect them real quick. Okay, they're both 400. So this is where flex bases kicks in. They're both ideally 400 pixels. But now my question is, what happens when we go under 400 pixels? You'll notice that in, in regular floats, it just break onto the next line. But in this case, they sort of start just uh, chopping themselves down a little bit because we don't have any sort of uh, wrapping turned on with Flexbox just yet. So that's where Flex Shrink comes in. So if Flex Grow is how do we deal with the extra space available to us, Flex Shrink is how do we sort of slim ourselves down when there really isn't enough space uh, for all of us. So again, ideally it would be 400, but we, we really just don't have the, the pixels to do that. So how should we kind of slim ourselves down? So I'm gonna go ahead and um, the default flex shrink is one. So you'll notice that if I bring it really, really skinny here, you'll notice that that one's 279 and that one's also 279. So the default for Flexbox is that when there's not enough room, just evenly divide it amongst yourselves and everyone's happy. However, we might not want that. Um, so what we could go ahead and say is flex shrink. And I'm gonna put an outrageous number right on here and say 10 again and refresh. So. Let's go back down to our 800. Okay, here and then here we go. Watch what starts to happen. Oh, interesting. So we put a flex shrink on one of 10, and two, the second box, does not, or it takes up way more room than that. So what that tells us about flex shrink is it's a number as to how much of myself should I give up in proportion to the other one. So you'll notice that box two doesn't have flex shrink, but again, the default is one. So when we have not enough room, I'm gonna shrink myself 10 times more than box two. Now that's a bit outrageous. You might do something like, uh, like five. Um, I'm gonna shrink myself five times less or more than box two. Refresh, you'll see there. So to get it. And that's really handy in uh, responsive design if you've got a content in a sidebar where if you've got the space, you can do a really nice design. When you're in your kind of ideal scenario, you, you can split it up evenly. And then once you get really small, you can sort of say, all right, this is how you should handle it. And we're not dealing with floats. We're not dealing with uh, any sort of adding up. You know, in, in floats, you need to make sure that you always hit 100%. In this case, I'm going ahead and I'm using pixels. You can use M's or REMs or really anything you want. So that's flex basis, grow and shrink. Now you probably will never go ahead and write it like this because we want to use the property just simply flex. So we'll say flex. Um, we first say the grow, then we say the shrink, and then we say the basis. And that's in a nice single line. Um, and then We'll go ahead and do this one as well. Flex is going to be one, one, 400 PX, and we do it all in one go. So even if you're not going to be setting the basis, like if you just do something like that, or even like we did before, you just set it to simply one, uh, it's recommended that you set it in the shorthand because the browser is going to kind of look at your uh, your layout and intelligently figure out how big these two other ones are, should be, uh, which is kind of cool. You give up a little bit of control that you might be used to with uh, setting hard widths and, and floats with your regular CSS, but uh, that's the beauty of 
Flexbox. <laughs>